I'm judging the game for what it is, not what you guys want it to be, not the future, not the sequel. I'm judging the game for what it is, not how they marketed it. I'm playing the game. I've been playing the game. I have played the game. And I'm here to say that Sonic Frontiers is at best a 6 out of 10. These are my honest thoughts. You can watch the VOD here, by the way, and I encourage you to because I'm not as negative as I was in before the game came out. The reason I nitpick is because I don't want Sonic to be a critical seven out of 10. I want him to be a nine or 10 out of 10. And a lot of those nitpicks that I make are polish issues that I think could push the game way high above its weight class. But there are just some really glaring problems with Frontiers as it is. I'm not settling for, this is a foundation, the next one will be better. I'm kind of tired of that as a fandom to just think that this is what we deserve and this is what we need is just another seven out of 10. Well, it's better than a six out of 10. Well, it's better than forces. The rules of momentum in Frontiers are all over the place. Jumping off a rail gives you momentum, but jumping on the ground ruins all momentum. I don't know why this is the case. It feels really bad. The rules of the physics need to be consistent between the cyber stage and open world levels. I don't know why Kishimoto thought it would be a good idea to have the cyber stage levels control completely differently than the open world. I understand that you would obviously limit Sonic's power and speed, so that way you can't just blast through everything. That makes sense. Like, you can't just bring your levels and everything you've leveled up into the cyber stage. I think that would break the game immensely. If you try boosting and then jumping, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. The jump is really my biggest problem with the way Sonic controls right now. I think everything else feels pretty fine. The combat is super button mashy, as we all thought it was going to be. It's nothing special. The parry is a joke. You can just hold it down. It'll do it by itself. It's baby's first devil may cry. We all know this. And that's fine. There's not a lot of depth to the combat. A lot of people were saying that it's the best part of the game. That's a really low bar, I think. It's just really simple. I actually think the open world design and the gameplay loops are the best part about Frontiers. I, I was having a ton of fun running around, collecting stuff mindlessly, and kind of just looking for the next sort of set piece moment and just kind of trying my best to chain those together. There's something really special about being able to move Sonic freely. And this is my biggest problem with the boost games is that it feels like an on-rails experience and then a claustrophobic one. I'm enjoying myself because the camera... And I, I like to harp on cameras, okay? The camera is actually really decent. It, it's, it's frustrating to fight it sometimes, but in terms of like how much of the world you can see, for example, in previous titles, when you boost, the camera zooms in into like a claustrophobic. So I see less of the level, the faster I'm going. The faster you go in a Sonic game, the more you should be able to see so you can react to stuff. And I feel like Frontiers does that pretty well. Even in the Cyber Stage 2D levels, I feel like the camera is, uh, I think the camera is zoomed out quite far back that you can react to stuff on coming. And a lot of times I don't even need to repeat 2D Cyber Stage stages because I can see everything and I can actually get everything. And that feels really good. The camera's distance to Sonic is right where it should be in an open world and a 2D Sonic game. That being said, I want all 2D removed from future 3D games. I don't think we need to have that. It feels kind of like a cheap gimmick and it feels like a cheap nostalgia bait thing that Sonic is, oh, Sonic started out as 2D, so he's always gotta be 2D. Well, no, what made 2D Sonic special and important was the momentum and the physics. It's not the fact that it's a side scroller, it's the fact that you play with the physics in a 2D space. And since Frontiers clearly isn't doing that, there's no reason to keep including these 2D sections. There is something that aggravates me as a gamer and a player where control being taken away from me in moments where there's no need for it, it just, it actually just sets me off. Like it's something about it is just like, why do I, why am I locked into this right now? There's a difference between a set piece moment where the camera is sort of showing Sonic going around a, a rail loop and all that stuff. And then there's the 2D sections where you can't even jump off the rail into space, even though you're in an open world, you can't jump off the rail now. You are locked in these 2D sections. Don't ever do this again. It's terrible and it feels terrible. I want the entire open world to be in 3D. I wanna be able to see things. I want to be able to experience the world in 3D. And for the most part, it does that really well. I'm having a lot of fun just running around looking for stuff. I actually think it's fun, but it's really bad too because the character controller, it's gotta go. The next major open world frontiers-ish strand type Sonic game needs to do three big things, okay? We gotta get a new engine because that pop-in is completely unacceptable and it's just an engine limitation. It's clear that the Hedgehog engine has met its match and it looks ugly, the pop-in is ugly, it wasn't built for an open world and it shows. My worry is that Sonic Team is gonna keep running with this engine into the ground 
when they could be using like, I don't know, reach out to Square Enix for their engine that they're using in Forspoken or reach out to, gee, I don't know, unreal.com and download Unreal Engine 5 and make a game in that. Essentially, Frontiers is just a bunch of prefabs littered throughout an open world space. It's not really that architected, you know? There's not really that much special stuff going on, and that's something I'll get to in a little bit. But you're basically, you have a bunch of prefabs. You have you have rails, springs, boost pads, breakable boxes, just littered throughout the space, okay? And these like sort of set piece moments. All of that stuff should have level of detail models for it. And level of detail models is basically the farther you are away from stuff, the lower detail it's going to be. And as you move closer, 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 see how more detailed my hand gets? That's what should happen in a video game. Someone said that it's probably just one person and he's probably like 12 years old and he doesn't really have a functioning brain. But one person said like, oh, all games have pop in. It's not entirely true. Some games solve pop in by having objects sort of fade into view. And then once you see them in view, they begin to upgrade in details that get closer to you. But there are solutions we found and it's 2022 now, that type of pop in should be expected on a PS1. It should not be expected on a 2022 title and coming from a AAA company. I don't even think Sonic is a AAA team. I think Sonic team is a AA team. Part of the reason I say that is just because of the lack of polish all around in the game. There's some things I really like. I really like the particle effects for most stuff. Um, I think Sonic's Sonic, the Sonic boom thing looks terrible, but I think when enemies get hit up in the air, when they're destroyed, there's some really beautiful particle effects going on that I think show that Sonic team is kind of like in the realm of, of the way the game should look. I think I think that the animation polish is is a huge problem with the game. There are some things that look really good and some things that look really bad. I think Sonic's run still looks really bad. I think Sonic himself just isn't as animated as he could be. That kind of bleeds into my second problem with the game, which is just a complete lack of art direction. I mean, the, the enemies have consistent design and there's sometimes some like spiral steeples that look like they belong in the world. But for the most part, the desert rails are the same rails that you saw in the first level. And so this sort of like forested environment doesn't have like viney rails to grind on. It, they're just technical rails. And I don't understand why there's no art direction for these prefabs. You could have springs with moss on them that belong on the island, but in the desert, maybe they're covered with sand just a little bit or something. You, you have to have a response to Sonic being in a realistic environment. If you're not going to go with the zany, surreal art of the 90s, right, that I'm sure I'm going to be accused of being a classic cuck and all that, okay, maybe Sonic isn't going to have that, but he should have some color in his world, right? Sonic Heroes is probably the best a Sonic game, a 3D Sonic game has looked in a long time. I know a lot of you are going to say Unleashed. I disagree. I think Unleashed is actually quite boring to look at. Take, take for example, Elden Ring, okay? Elden Ring came out at the beginning of the year. Everyone knows this is not a cutting edge game, okay? This is not, these are not cutting edge graphics. But one thing that Elden Ring does really well is making its game look beautiful just through its art direction. The textures aren't very good. They're quite muddy. And some things look too sharp or too weird or the models aren't high res enough. And Elden Ring is like the best looking Souls game, but Souls games have always been kind of a little behind and they use the same engine. They're kind of running in the same problems that Sonic Team is. They're like running on the same engine, running into the same limitations. There's kind of some weird stuff going on visually. Elden Ring has those same problems. But one thing the Souls games always do really well is have very, very clear, strong art direction. And it, I personally care more about art direction and the artistry in a video game than I do the graphical fidelity. And it's that simple for me. So I don't understand why Sonic Team would lean on a more realistic approach if they can't even get photorealistic textures in the Sonic game. I mean, these, these are abysmal looking 2022 textures. If you're not gonna make an incredibly cutting edge, beautiful photorealistic Sonic game, you're gonna go with this like sort of middle of the road. It's like an HD version of Sonic Adventure, but not really because there's no artistry. Like what exactly are you doing? And this is one of my biggest problems with, with the game right now is it's just kind of ugly to look at. I don't think anything is that pretty. There's there's nothing striking about these environments really. There's nothing thematic about the gimmicks that are going on. There's nothing thematic about the way things look in the environment. So I imagine that every island is gonna have these floating rails everywhere. It's the same floating rails. There's, there's no theme, there's no art direction going on with these gimmicks. That's inexcusable, that needs to change. That can't happen again. And frankly, the story and the dialogue, it's really cringy. It's super cringy. You know, like I'm not here for the story that much. I don't think Sage is a very compelling villain. I think the tone is all over the place. There was a moment on the first island and there's just a track that starts playing that sounds like it's straight out of Mario Party all of a sudden. Your times will fail the quest. Boosting and dodging are not available. What is this music? Is this a Mario Party game now? You know, I have these piano noises like doom, 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 and then all of a sudden it's like ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. that's that's a tonal disconnect for me. I think Sonic would do better with a, with a more jovial tone. Frankly, the OVA struck a great balance between being jovial and serious. 
and Saturday morning cartoon, right? Like the, the OVA is this sort of like shonen esque, but not too serious and not too like cringy uh, take on the Sonic universe that I think really fits the franchise. But then I actually think of like Sonic Heroes. Sonic Heroes was this sort of like, you know, power of friendship, but we're gonna defeat the odds and we gotta defeat Metal Sonic and like, there's some really good ideas in Sonic Heroes. Yeah, I think, I think Sonic Team is close to cracking the formula on a really good Sonic title. Part of that is just due to the gameplay loop. I think the gameplay loop is really strong. There's no reason this game should run at 30 frames per second on last gen. I'm sorry, the game is not that pretty to justify that. I think nitpicking and being very critical of the polish is what is gonna take Sonic Frontiers from being a six out of 10 to a nine out of 10. You gotta have better animation polish. If you're gonna have one playable character, I expect your character to look like a, like a Pixar movie. So again, the three big things that Sonic Team needs to fix, move to a new game engine to fix your pop-in and all the rest of your engine limitations. Completely rework from the ground up your character controller. It is trash. And thirdly, you really, really need to go back to your roots with art direction. Those are the three things Sonic Team needs to work on to impress me for the next Frontiers game. And go play other video games. Listen to other music. Enjoy other franchises. And then come back to Sonic and ask yourself, what could Sonic be? Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Sonic is dead.